Perhaps we need some outside universal threat. Our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat. The plan, a one world government. I the only way to do out. it is to get us to embrace it. And the only way to embrace it is from an alien attack. Ronald Reagan talked about it many times at the UN, CFR. He talked about it, he goes, wouldn't it make, he looked at all the, the leaders of the, of, the nation, of the world and said, wouldn't it make our lives easier? If we just had some, you know, some kind of extraterrestrial threat. He told me, quote, at a top robotics company in Japan this week, four robots being developed for military applications killed 29 humans in the lab. The scariest part is that lab workers deactivated two of the robots, took apart the third, but the fourth robot began restoring itself and somehow connected to an orbiting satellite to download information about how to rebuild itself even more strongly than before. And this is serious shit, Linda, but you're never going to hear about this in the news. processor can react a hundred times faster than a human. The stochastic motion is an anti-sniper feature. You can make a swarm of assassin drones for very little money. It has cameras and sensors, and just like your phones and social media apps, it does facial recognition. Inside here is three grams of shaped explosive. This is how it works. By just taking the, the, the face ID chip that's used in cell phones and uh, having a small explosive charge and a, and a standard drone, we have them just do a grid sweep of the building until they find the person they're looking for, ram into them and, and explode. You can do that right now. No extra, no new technology is needed right now. Probably a bigger risk than being hunted down by a, a drone is that uh, AI would be used to make incredibly effective propaganda uh, that would not seem like propaganda. So these are deep fakes? Yeah, influence the direction of society, influence elections. In a telephone interview, Mr. Labetta described conversations with dozens of witnesses and with experts who had examined the evidence and spoken to the children. He said there were about three landings of the UFO between September 23rd and September 29th. In the latest development, not yet reported by TASS, Mr. Labetta said that Jenrik M. Solanov, head of the Voronezh Geophysical Laboratory, today asked the children to draw what they had seen. In October 11, 1989, a story penned by Esther B. Fine, special to the New York Times, highlighted the Russian authorities' assertive stance on UFO landings, asserting their reality as incontrovertible facts rather than mere fantasies. Russian officials' unwavering claims regarding the existence of unidentified flying objects landing on Earth challenged conventional skepticism and demanded a more serious examination of these phenomena. Their insistence signaled a departure from the prevailing dismissive attitude, 
prompting a reconsideration of the enigmatic occurrences that have long fueled speculations and debates. In the realm of UFO-related conspiracy theories, some accounts have circulated about alleged encounters with three-eyed creatures, adding a sensational twist to the phenomenon. These theories suggest that extraterrestrial beings possessing three eyes have interacted with Earth and its inhabitants, often fueling both fascination and apprehension. While these claims have not gained mainstream scientific validation, they persist within the fringes of UFO lore, contributing to the broader narrative of unidentified entities and their purported interactions with our world. Such stories often weave a complex tapestry of speculation, woven from both genuine curiosity and imaginative conjecture, inviting further exploration into the mysterious realms beyond our understanding. Esther B. Fain's 1989 article encapsulated the evolving perspectives on UFOs, from the Russians' insistence on their concrete existence to the intriguing conspiracies surrounding encounters with three-eyed creatures. These narratives underscored the ongoing human fascination with the unknown, provoking contemplation about our place in the universe and the possibility of interactions with beings that defy conventional comprehension. What are your thoughts on this subject? I would like to know your thoughts below. In Suffolk County, England, there is a remote forest in the village of Rendlesham that has become famous for being the site of one of the most extraordinary UFO encounters ever reported. Airman John Burroughs was performing a routine security check at a U.S. Air Force base when he received orders to investigate a possible downed aircraft. As the servicemen approached the strange lights, Sergeant Penniston reportedly saw a large craft just beyond the tree line. I never had a feeling of it being extraterrestrial. It's always been that they were simply us in the future. Could it be that the craft reportedly witnessed by James Penniston and John Burroughs came not from a distant star, but from a distant point in time. In October of 2020, a sharp-eyed investigator scans satellite images of Antarctica and comes across a site that stops author Brad Olson in his digital tracks. It's a metallic-looking object half covered in ice. Look closer. It sure seems to be a raised disk casting a shadow onto the ice. Olson thinks that as the ice melts, an alien spacecraft has emerged from where it was left thousands of years ago. But what alien would park their ride in such a hostile place? Antarctica and Mars are both extremely sterile environments. If I were a Martian and I wanted to choose a place on Earth to live, Antarctica would be the closest thing to home I could find. And yet, I ask you, is not an alien force already among us? What could be more alien to the universal aspirations of our peoples than war and the threat of war?